Well, Ida is on the move, as Greg mentioned, and we are getting a better look at the trail of destruction left behind. The images are clearly heartbreaking. Video this morning from Grand Isle, and this is from where Ida made landfall as a category for hurricane. The destruction is clearly evident. One home after another. Many look like this across the entire state, destroyed or even still underwater. Jobin Panikar is in New Orleans this morning as people start to pick up the pieces. Now, we did not have to go searching for any of the damage that we've seen. It has been right in front of us and it has been everywhere. What you're seeing behind me is some of the worst damage here in downtown New Orleans. What we understand on this block alone, there were three buildings that were badly damaged. This is one of them. We're told nobody was hurt, nobody was inside. On Monday, we saw how devastating Hurricane Ida was. In Laplace, we, they are seeing three to four feet of water, impassable in some places. Now, families are walking through that high water to get to high ground. There are trees down all across southern Louisiana. There are power poles down in many spots. Of course, power is still out. Food, gas, and power are in very limited supply. This one store used a generator to stay open. The line was well out the door. The same goes for gas. Now let's hear from the people we spoke with. I gotta charge my cell phone somehow. The power's been out since five o'clock yesterday. I, I think I could just leave the car running and the phone charging because I, I don't think anybody's gonna steal the car. Now we are expecting a contingent of Texas resources to make their way to this region. We're talking about swift water teams, other first responders, even some large nonprofits who plan to stage here and start helping. Reporting here in New Orleans, I'm Jobin Panicker. It's not just Louisiana. Ida hit Mississippi hard as well. Flash flooding still an issue there. Overnight, two people were killed when flood water caused a highway to collapse. And right now, hundreds of thousands of people still without power across Mississippi and Louisiana. Cleo Green has been following the latest on the damage this morning. Just hard to wrap your head around just how many folks are still struggling. Cleo. I know, Mark, and it's still unclear exactly how many people are still in need of being rescued across southern Louisiana, but thousands of National Guard members have now been called in to help. I mean, it's a mess out there. This is in the Grand Isle area. There is widespread power outages. They continue to be a major concern. Officials say some people could be without electricity for weeks. On top of that, there is water supply and sewage system issues. Uh, this morning, an urgent search and rescue mission is underway along Louisiana's Gulf Coast and one parish just outside of New Orleans. Well, officials say nearly 800 people have been rescued so far. That's good news. Some trapped in their homes due to flooding. And this is new video from above Grand Isle. That picture I just showed you on my touchscreen showing homes destroyed and buildings without roofs. At last check, more than 5,000 members of the Louisiana National Guard are helping in this rescue effort. Uh, they're using 95 high water vehicles, 79 boats and 34 helicopters. There are families, many, many families that have lost just about everything, as you can see in this photo here. Now, yesterday, President Joe Biden, he said that they're doing everything that they can to help. He also said that the Federal Communications Commission has worked out a deal where customers who have lost service can actually use cell towers from other providers until it's restored, no matter what carrier they have. Uh, now, the storm has been especially tough for healthcare workers in Louisiana, so we're going to bring in our Sonia Zod for more on the impact for hospitals. Sonia, Louisiana was already dealing with a major surge in COVID cases. Yeah, Ida really put the pressure on this already crowded hospital system, actually all systems across Louisiana. The COVID caseload there is among the worst in the country. I think most of you probably already know that. About 90% of Louisiana's ICUs are full, according to Johns Hopkins. Only 41% of their population is vaccinated, and there were at least... Eh, 2600 ish people with COVID in Louisiana hospitals before the storm. Now, at least 66 patients were evacuated from one hospital. We told you that yesterday. Some hospitals are left with significant roof and water damage. One nonprofit health care provider is re relying on backup generators at this point. Remember, we saw that in Houston with Harvey too. the Texas Medical Center area. If you're familiar with it, flooded uh, back then, leaving hospitals scrambling. The difference now is simply this global pandemic. Uh, the hardest part is finding destination and receiving facilities because of all the COVID. A lot of these patients are COVID patients that it's just hard. Hospitals are saturated everywhere. You know, I say simply, but it, it's of course very complex. Uh, patients with special needs in New Orleans are being asked to call 311 to sign up for Ida emergency response planning as well. Mark.
All right, thank you for that, Sonia. Our neighbors in Louisiana, as we know, have a long road to recovery from this hurricane. That's why WFAA and our stations across Texas have joined forces for Texas Cares Hurricane Ida Relief. If you'd like to donate, get out your cell phone, open up your camera, scan this QR code. A link will pop up where you can help, and all the money raised will be going to the American Red Cross Ida Relief efforts. We also have a phone bank kicking off tonight in our 4 p.m. newscast, so you can donate then as well, and we will thank you in advance for your generosity.